Chaz Wing checking the WCME Midcoast Weather Eye. 17 year old Chaz Wing hopes to have a career in radio. He's been getting hands on experience at a local station. But wherever he goes, he carries a burden. The fall is always a hard time for me every year. When Wing was 12, he was bullied about everything from his choice of music, his weight, to being asked if he was gay. School policy, he was told, was to report incidences to. I believe they actually said any staff member would help you. The bullying became more aggressive until one day Wing says he was raped by two boys in the school bathroom. One threatened to burn down his house if anyone found out. Then the boy sliced his right arm. It was fall. Wing didn't say anything till the following fall, by which point he says he was raped another two times. That's the time when I was uh, finally able to tell my mom about what had happened. Wing alleges the school's actions were insufficient to stop the bullying and the escalating violence. Like so many other students who say they've been assaulted, he eventually transferred out of school. The boys Wing says attacked him stayed behind. Relying on information from state education departments and federal crime data, a year-long investigation by the Associated Press uncovered about 17,000 official reports of sex assaults by students in K-12 schools over a recent four-year period. The tally, however, is a decided undercount. There is an abundant evidence suggesting that sexual misconduct and sexual victimizations underreported. There are no requirements for schools to report such student violence. An AP found states vary widely in how they classify it. In Wing's case, the school staunchly defended how it handled its investigation. In a deposition statement, the principal called the sexual assaults highly unlikely. The school, working with police, carried out an investigation which included questioning the accused. The student didn't had no idea what even we were talking about. He had no frame of reference for um, anal sex. But the principal recognized bullying did happen at his school. Studies have long found bullying can be a precursor to sexual harassment and assault. Like in Wing's case, typically victims' grades drop, attendance falls, rates of depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts increase. Psychologist Wilson Kenny, who has helped develop student intervention programs in Oregon, says schools often think they don't have a problem. Ironically, now those districts are in the process of implementing similar kinds of systems because they do have that problem there. It happens in all types of schools to all types of children. In cases identified by the AP, some administrators engaged in cover-ups to hide evidence of a possible crime and protect their school's image. It's a problem that most people don't want to address and don't want to face. Seeing the school's inability to handle the problem, Wing's parents sued. In a deposition video, one teacher testified. It wasn't happening when we were watching and we were trying to keep a close eye on it, but it was always around the corner or away from us. Under federal education law, public school districts are obligated to act on bullying and sexual violence. When schools mishandle such cases, victims have the option to sue. There are a lot of organizations like mine and others who are doing their best to make sure that students have access to the legal system, regardless of their financial status. After four years of fighting, Wing ended up with a $50,000 settlement. It didn't make up for the emotional trauma he endured, but Wing wanted to tell his story in hopes of helping others facing a similar crisis. Marina Hutchinson, The Associated Press.